red surface. I'm going to call the meeting to order, everyone. Thank you. It's nice to see everybody. Pardon? There's a lot of it here today. No alternates to see any changes to the agenda. None. Uh, let me make those. We do have an executive session at the end of the meeting. I have some updates that we really went on. Uh, the minutes of May 22nd, 2023. Any changes, modifications, additions? I'll make a motion we accept them as presented. I'll say any discussion? All those in favor? I have a motion. I'm sorry. Um, it says that Larry was seated for me, but it doesn't mention that I came to the meeting late and then we unseated Larry because I showed up. It's just I was 10 minutes late. And the minutes do not reflect that. I showed up. I think they should. That's a good point to bring up. So uh, let me make it. It's just a minor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, you were tardy. I was tardy. So it's school. I know that's why I put up. I wrote it down. So she was not excused. So she didn't I'm, take her seat when she got here. I'm trying to remember because I thought she was late at previous meeting. Oh, it might have been. I may have my dates mixed yeah. up. That's very do, do you want me to check? No, 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 you want to get to? You okay. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's right. And, and my Rick, Rick said specifically <laughs> that you're going to see me and that he expected you to be, be there in like 10 minutes. I, yeah, but I think I think Josh is, is correct. I think that was the meeting beforehand because then I was just talking outside. It's like you know when you got to work and you got a chance to make some money, you got to take it. But I think it was the last meeting that I was absent. So that's my that's mistake. Thought. Okay. That's my mistake. It was the meeting before that? Okay. So now I I'll check the record and I'll let you know if we're wrong. Okay. Very we good. can vote Thank to you. modify it. Not already. Yeah. Don't need but already. Why don't we hold off on approving those minutes until our next meeting? So we have more already. Time. So I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw it. Okay. Uh, audience of citizens, anything anyone would like to bring up to us that isn't already on the agenda? Um, I'm a resident on 66 East. Your name? Carol Ann McLean. Yes. And um, I've provided a document for you for actually the hearing that's going to be held um, for the application that has been submitted for this evening. Um, I would just like to know what the process is for me to add something to your agenda for a next meeting coming up. What well, do you we... don't get the right to add things to our no, agenda. No, but I mean, how do I present something to the commission? What is it you're looking to do? Um, we have um, an issue with the property next to us, um, 68, um, 66 East, where we have a, a water buildup um, because they removed trees and they're redoing roads and stuff behind there. And the water is impacting our properties and starting to erode our properties. And so we, why, why don't you talk with our town planner about that? He can give you some guidance. He, they, uh, we've already been this round robin with them. And, what do you mean by round robin? Well, I've, I've spoken to the sanitarium. Um, you know, uh, Glenn, this our sanitarium, and he said that the town needs to rectify, you know, work with the owner of the property to rectify the problem. The water is being diverted down to an area that's close to our properties, and then when we get a heavy rainstorm, and sometimes we get a lot of water, that water is then pushing not onto their property, it's going onto our properties and, you know, causing erosion on our properties below. We would like a solution where the water is diverted back to their property. And I'm not quite sure, you know. And, and you've talked to the town planner about this? Um, the town planner is, he said that that's not his area <laughs> to. Sorry. I, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm new to this area I'm from another town, and I just don't understand how things can be managed. Well, not, not everything is within the realm for the new or the planning process. Okay. And that's what you have done. We have a certain function. And if there's been um, activity that wasn't permitted under our zoning regulations, that would be something that we would take, take a look at from an uh, enforcement standpoint. I don't know that, or I don't, don't know that, or not know that. I don't know enough about what you're, you're saying. 
So, uh, but so, I would think that you could get some guidance about whether it does or it does not why we're doing now. Yeah, you know, I'm not quite sure about that. I will get to the bottom of it, but so this so board sure is for I'm just I just want to clear it. I'm not sure what you're saying to us. Are you saying you reviewed it with them and you they I don't think that they understand what what the exact problem is. Um when the sanitarium spoke to his boss in Hills Park is and he said it's definitely not that she could buy spend a lot of money on that kind of for a commission report about runoff water and how it should be converted and um, filtered so it doesn't impact other properties next to it and everything. And I just don't understand why this policy wasn't in place when they committed and I don't have much information. Yeah. Right. So um I'll I'll apologize, uh, Mr. Chair. Your your sound isn't great. I'm I'm not hearing a lot of what you're saying. I, I obviously caught what Mrs. McLean um is saying and I'm aware of her concern um out behind her property. Um I we visited her property with the zoning enforcement officer and the wetland officer. Uh, Mrs. McLean uh, lives at the basically at the top of a slope that goes down to um, the Hop River uh, and the Hop River Trail, uh, well below, probably thirty to fifty feet down below. Um, what she's describing is a wet, and and wetlands are wet, and when when it rains, wetlands get more wet, which is the function of wetlands. No, no. Um, I'm and sorry, John. That's please, not correct. Please don't interrupt. Okay. Let him speak, and then you can speak out. Okay, thank you. I, I I apologize that we did not give the answer that that Ms. McLean wished, but there is no indication at all, and this is from myself, the zoning officer, and the wetlands officer, that any activity at 68 is increasing any kind of runoff uh, in an unnatural way, um, and and wetlands are doing anything other than what wetlands do. Um, it it may be more wet now than it has been historically, but that is not, uh, there is no direct um, vector from any activity we're aware of to increase water um, down down the hill, basically at the base of a slope um, where Mrs. McLean lives. Um, I'm not sure what business it is of the sanitarium, um, but uh, I, you know, I apologize we couldn't give her satisfaction on this, but there's no indication of anything untoward other than wetlands behaving like wetlands. Okay. You, may, you may want to consult the civil engineer and get a perspective from the civil engineer. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, because um, they didn't go down to the area to see it, um, to actually look at where the, the area is an issue. So how they could make um, a determination based from looking from up at the road is just beyond me. But I would thank you for your recommendation. So this board, this commission covers things that don't have permits. So, and it's on the I wouldn't characterize it quite like that. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, um, I, I would probably state it much differently than okay. that. Okay. And so the zoning enforcement agent isn't required to report to you guys about violations or issues that are pending yeah. to the board, to the for, commission. For, you know, if you have a lot of general questions, I think you can address them to the staff. Yeah. Um, but to, to have a back and forth and to be queried like this, okay. I don't think this is the right forum for okay. it. You know, if we can help you point you in the right direction, that's great. Yes. But we have, you know, commission business and, uh, you know, sometimes people have civil issues. Sometimes uh -huh. they're just engineering issues. I don't even want to weigh in on that. I don't know, have enough knowledge it. about it okay. to make any type of statement over about what you've said. Yes. Um, I, I do know that our town planner is very skilled and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he may, may be able to give you a little more direction if you interact with him. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. You okay. Know, but John, that's but possible. If, if, he, if there's any more direction to be given. <laughs> I, I think you've demonstrated you know how to get a hold of me, Carol. I did. Okay. okay. So yeah, we're very excited, and we're here to help. It doesn't mean that we have the absolute authority over every aspect that people like us to have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we can't resolve civil disputes um, that are of a, uh, a legal nature between two parties. Mm -hmm. We're here to enforce, to make and enforce our zoning regulations. Exactly. That's really what our charge is, okay. and to help plan the, the future of the town. Okay. So we have tools to do that, mm -hmm. and if we can help along the way, we try to. But 
get to dig into a very specific issue yeah. in a lot of depth mm -hmm. in this form. I don't I don't know that this is the right form. For I appreciate it. your time and, and consideration and the um, information that you gave me this evening. Thank any, you. Any thoughts from the commission on? I think you covered it pretty good. Okay. I would take pictures when it's the water is we have it ever. and we provided it to them. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else under audience of citizens? Um, I, we have no unfinished business. Under new business, uh, we have an application by Steve Harrington, SDH Investments, a site plan and special permit applications for a farmer's market and outdoor entertainment accessory to restaurant use at 68, 94, and 98 Route 66 East, Map 8, 8 Lot 1, Lot 9, Lot 1, in map 10 lot 80 per sections 31.2.5 and 31.3.4 uh, the plan is to receive the application uh, and discuss any possible action on the site plan application inspect this uh, schedule a public hearing for the special permit application that said uh, would the applicant mr harrington right here Hi, would you like to talk to this at all? Uh, we're going to open a public hearing for at least a portion of it. Is some portion of it uh, a revision to a, a site plan or is it a sp pure special permit? It's pure special permit. There's not okay. a lot of changes to the site plan. Okay. I, if, if I might, Mr. Chair? Please. It's actually, there's the there two separate activities that Mr. Harrington is seeking. One is for um, a, 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 a outdoor entertainment like panning for gold sluis um, sort of family fun activity that is um, a structure that's an accessory to the restaurant use that requires a public hearing however a seasonal farmers market um, is uh, allowable in the commercial district by site plan approval so that portion I, even though mr mr harrington submitted both enhancements so you could see how the two activities interacted together on the overall site um, the, the farmer's market portion is would be eligible for site plan review and does not require a public hearing. That's something we're ready to do tonight. That's that's entirely up to you. But okay. um, it, it's the, the application is complete and he, sub, he submitted, you know, sort of the, the, the site plan showing where everything goes. I can put that on the screen if it's useful. Yeah, that was the reason for my question. I thought we had two separate things that we were re reviewing and one didn't require a special permit. That's that's precisely correct. It's it's but both both are being considered or both are being submitted together as um you know because they're taking place on the same collection of properties that sort of work together in support of the existing special permit restaurant use. Okay. Um, so the application that was submitted going back through it, it doesn't delineate between those two aspects of the, the, the proposals. Um, it, it does. The, the narrative, I believe, uh, contains sort of two, the, the narrative is on a single page, but the, the two portions are, are treated separately in the narrative. Thank you. Okay. What's, I'm going to go to the commission. Uh, What's your pleasure? We look at the site plan modification tonight and the special permit. We'll schedule a public hearing. Yeah, I agree for the sake of time. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, so we're going to um, address the, the site plan modification this evening, and then we'll schedule a public public hearing for the next available time from a, a scheduling standpoint. Okay. Um, Joshua, when would be the next time that we could schedule a public hearing? Uh, we or, could. or John, if you want to weigh in on that. John and I spoke, and I believe we could schedule it for July 10th. Okay. Yeah. Everyone good with scheduling it for then? Yeah. Let me make a motion to schedule the public hearing for the special permit application for July 10th, 2nd, 2023. Second. Second. Any discussion? Who's in favor? Okay. Schedule it for then. So as far as the site plan modification aspect of this, Mr. Heron, would you like to speak to that? So just to give us an overview. The farmer's market is, we have 25 spots, I believe, uh, just in the field, between the restaurant and the, and the shop. And 
it's not much to describe. I mean, people come and they sell vendors will come in little and things for two and a half hours on a Saturday. Okay. Um, I think you've all been to a farmer's market. I mean, it's not, uh, not all I have a lot to say about it. Some farmer's markets draw a lot of, lot of public, and you and you want to hope it does, right? I would think so. And, um, but, uh, and how, how would the timing of that coincide with open hours for the restaurant and all the other activities there? Uh, it's an hour before we open up, and then it, go, it closes an hour into work, so it's That's not... Shouldn't conflict. I, it hasn't been that big of a thing. Um, you know, there's uh, we seem to enjoy it, but it's just not that big of a function. Um, we have plenty of parking there. Uh, it doesn't really conflict with the restaurant of op busy operation hours. So Saturdays typically get very, very busy after three. Um, and there's 25 booths, it's not, uh, and, and there really isn't that much more space to expand it. And that field, so it's, it is what it is. We haven't even filled up all the vendor spots. Not to say that that won't happen, but um, even if you did, there's plenty of excess parking and, and an activity on the field. Are you providing any um, entertainment as part of the farmers market, like bands or anything like that? Not yet. No. Yeah. Okay. But I have, um, you know, all that stuff is already in place with our original permit. Right. So, um, but no. So that's only so like the morning thing. So yeah. like a two, two to three hour event. Right? It's two hours. Two hours. Yeah. Go ahead. It does say on your application for a farmer's market and outdoor entertainment. And on your application, you said you're not planning any outdoor entertainment? I'm confused. What do you mean by outdoor entertainment? I'm not going to stand. I mean, I, I don't know. You, you, tell, you, you tell me. It's on your application. I think that's, I think that's I referring think that's to the access. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what we were asking. That's you know what, what I consider outdoor entertainment like having a rock band or something like that. The sluice is a little water tower. It has a, um, since we're going to, I guess we'll talk about that. It is a little water tower that's about 15 feet tall. It has a little trench way that's about a foot wide. And kids buy a little bag of sand that's full of gems and things like that and sand. And they pan for gold or whatever the stuff is. It's a little entertainment thing. It recycles the water and the sand so it doesn't make a mess. And it's a little entertainment for little kids. So I think that's where the entertainment thing comes on. Right. From. So Mr. Mr. Chair? Same application. So I guess that was the wording. But yeah, there it is right there. John? Right. So just, yeah, to, to be clear, the, the, the sluice um, is is approximately a 20 foot by 40 foot setup that's considered a structure, a permanent structure, um, which is therefore, and, and the purpose being outdoor entertainment, which is the um, category of uh, special permit use that's associated with restaurants. So restaurants are allowed by special permit, including associated outdoor entertainment. And so because that portion, this, this, you know, this, this family fun sluice thing, is an outdoor entertainment in support of the restaurant. That is why he needs a modification of a special permit. So I would, I would say let's not get too much into the operation of the sluice um, until the public hearing. At this point, we're, we're really still uh, focusing on the, the site plan, which is the farmer's market. But, but the, again, the application is, these are things that are being added to or being proposed to be added to the properties associated with the main moose. Um, some are some are site plans, some are special permit. Okay. So for the site plan piece of it, it's the 25 farmers market stands, basically. That's correct. That's we're okay. All right. So we're just looking at the application for the farmers market under section 31.2.5. Correct. John. Yes, I'm sorry, that's that's correct. Okay. 
Any questions from the commission? Yeah. Any questions from the audience? Yeah. Uh, it's not a question. Um, Saturday during their event, um, there was a three car car accident in front of their entrance. Uh, car was, um, you know, I sent you guys pictures, I sent it to their, your clerk. But, um, you know, I think that uh, one, the sanitarium should be involved in this decision because I thought that farmers markets are state also licensed. So I would be concerned about that because farmers markets around the state of Connecticut, if you Google it, state of Connecticut farmers market, it's for families that also participate with WIC. So when they see farmers market, they assume that they take WIC coupons and families go there to participate to get food for their families. If it's called a farmer's market, it might get confusing for low-income families, and I would be you know, concerned about that. But the, the traffic and the car accident, that is a problem. And the one entrance and exit, I, I think that needs to be thoroughly thought out because there were a lot of people there on Saturday. It wasn't a little bit of people. There was a lot of people enjoying themselves, and we're not against that. We're all for it. But we also want safety because the speed limit on that road is 45 and you've got that bend coming around that you don't see that the moose has stopped traffic ahead. And I would consider, you know, somebody directing traffic or have some kind of entrance exit plan, you know, that could be thought out. That would be my main concern. I have a couple of comments on that. First sure. of all, there's two entrance and exits to the main moose. That's number one. Number two, our next door neighbor had a massive event on the same on that day. So all those extra cars, and I actually have a video that I can show you. I don't think we need to. It had nothing to do with the main moose. So they had cars parked up right on the shoulder of the road in front of the fencing and everything else. So that isn't exactly an accurate comment. The on the shoulder is actually the legal American. Right? I just think it should be looked at. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, please. No, no comments unless you're recognized. Thanks. Yes, Sarah. I have a question. Um, so according to this woman in the back, this has already been started. This has already happened. I'm like, my my question. Yeah, Any sure. farmers market there? We've been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah. Oh. And just coming in now. Honest to God, I didn't know I needed a permit to have a few booths on Saturday, so that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Oh. Do you want the truth? No, I didn't know. So. I know it's a small town, but not everybody can't be everywhere all at once. It's a pretty small show. There's only like eight booths, ten booths. I have 25 on the board, but we don't have anywhere near that many vendors. <laughs> and I've never had anybody ask to use a WIC card, so I don't even know what that is. But okay. Any other questions from the commission? No. <clears throat> Any thoughts? Would you like to put this to a vote? I'll make yes. a motion that we approve the application as presented. I second. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> you got it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Did I see unanimous? Okay. All right. So it's finished, right? Finished, right? One more. We still have conversation about what he's doing here, and I just well, if what we not, not, not approved. Right it just got approved. Or something. No, no, no. I actually, it's it's just a point of point of interest. As long as it's not about the special permit application that's coming up, that we'll have a public hearing scheduled. That would have to be done during the the um open the public hearing. It's more. Of, it's a question of the need for it. I mean. And I look at this 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 sluice way thing, and I, I think of it like it's kids' entertainment, like a like a playscape, or a, I mean, would somebody have to come to the planning and zoning commission for a playscape? To Isn't that part of the next kids? application? That's part of the public hearing. But I'm, I'm wondering, discussing. Do you, are you asking whether we should even be regulating it? Yeah. Right, it's, it's a pretty good. It seems it seems like we're all these amusement parks have them and everything. everything. It's not. I mean, somebody can have it in their yard. We right. might, like, and it's not even a permanent structure. So you can literally move it with a skidster, pick it up in pieces, so you put it away for a window yard. I think I think this is all something that should be discussed in public hearing. I don't think this is appropriate. No, just my opinion. I'll take it. 
Right. I want to take it, but I just I wonder if this board guy should even be. Well, I think from a general, like I'll just let me make a general comment. Yeah. Comment from a general comment, we've just witnessed part of the issues that we're dealing with day to day. Some of them know they need a permit for something yeah. because maybe we don't need a permit for something really. Right? Is it necessary? So I think part of what we need to do is do a better job of evaluating those. Revisions we need to do. But yeah, you know. So, <laughs> okay, and, but we can just cavalier talk about it and dismiss it and whatever. But it's like how is it not? Or it's not get it. Get it. Spend it. Right. seems like ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. Um, as long as it's not about the specifics of this yeah. application, it's a general yeah. comment about yeah. my restaurant. When I, it was already a restaurant when I bought it. Already had outdoor entertainment, had a stage. I had to go to a zoning meeting when I bought it. For whatever reason, I have no idea because I didn't change the use. I just fixed it up and made it a restaurant again. But I was granted a whole bunch of things at the time. So I, I, feel, I feel like every time I go to do something, I have to ask for every single individual thing, and I, I just don't understand that. Well, I think that's the reason for the comments that were just brought up. You know, how do we make this process? I, mean, I just don't expect to have, you know, even if there's, you can only fit probably 15 kids at the sluice at one time. It's not like it's an amusement park where you're going to have a thousand people showing up. Uh, the, the farmer's market. So, uh, I mean, well, Steve, let me ask you this. When you were, when you originally got your approvals of the restaurant, did yes. it include outdoor entertainment? Yes, it did. Then mm -hmm. I don't know why you're here. Why is it here? Why? Yeah. I don't exactly. know. This is a way to keep kids out of trouble. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. Forget, the, forget yeah. that. I'm just saying, yeah. procedure, procedurally, if you were granted a permit for the restaurant with outdoor entertainment under our guidelines, you can do that. You don't need to come in and put this thing up. That's That's my, it's my interpretation. I, I'd like to hear from our town planner because I, 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 I'm thinking that John, am I correct that it was your perspective that this would need a special permit? Yes, and and there's a couple of simple reasons. Number one, um, the sluice is not being proposed for the same parcel as the as the restaurant. It's a it's an entirely different piece of land um, under different ownership. So the um, reason for this special permit. Is to associate the three um, the three adjoining properties 90, uh, 68, 94, and ninety eight uh, Route sixty six East as part of the same um, overall function of the restaurant and its and its um, supporting elements, including things like parking and and um, accessory elements. If they were if it was part of the same property. I would think that there is something of an argument um, to be made that outdoor entertainment was already included as part of the original restaurant approval. Um, but again, it's a different property. And, and the purpose of this uh, application is to bring these all together. And you'll note that the, the separate owners of both of all the properties did sign this uh, application together. So it's not just a single applicant. Second, um, this is a new structure. It's, it's intended to be there for, for many months. Um, and it is it is different from a stage. It is different from a farmer's market. It is different from um, a dunking booth or some other uh, you know other associated outdoor entertainment. And and it is up to the commission to determine again again if uh, an, a restaurant with outdoor entertainment were an as of right use, this would be a less of an issue. But it's a special permit use, and any substantial change to a special permit use requires a new special permit. That's the way you set it up in your regulations. Um, you can shake your head all you want, but that is the way it, it written in your regulation, sir. Um, and the, the the purpose of the review on a special permit basis is to determine whether the new activity and the new structure changes in some way the fundamental public health, safety, and welfare function of the approved restaurant use. So when the sluice is open, you should be asking come special permit uh, public hearing if this changes traffic patterns, if this changes noise or other disturbance, that, that fundamentally um, changes the public's experience of this property. Um, it could be that you feel that this is quite innocuous, in which case I would anticipate a swift approval. 
but that does not mean it does not need to be reviewed. And the regulations you have approved and written demand that it be reviewed. The bottom line is there's a disconnect between what our regulations require versus what's common sense in many cases. And John is correct. As I review the regulations, the nucleus of the problem is within the regulations. So we need to do a better job moving forward, reviewing those and making things easier. We, have, we don't make things easy. And it's because of the regulations. I'd like to make a comment. When, uh, first of all, the properties are all, there is three different properties there that were lumped together. I own two, my daughter is the other owner. So it's owned by my family. Secondly, when we put the parking on the abutting property, we went through this where we said, okay, this part is now part of the kind of part of the restaurant. When we did the seat to table farm on the 25 acres on the other side, we went through this. So the part about is this is an adjoining piece of property? Are they together? They are together because the access to the farm, the parking, the storage for a whole bunch of stuff for the restaurant is in the building next door. So we've already gone down that road. This was before your time, John, actually. But um, we've had these same conversations about how the how the properties are blended into one operation, which they obviously are. So the, the town has never received anything formal about a, like a lease arrangement or some sort of inter inter property agreement between them, um, which is why at this point we thought it best to put them all on the same special permit so it would be formally recognized as essentially a single operation. But the town has never received any of those those documentation. And that's why we're here, I guess. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. Let, let's just approach this. I know what's going on in everyone's mind. We, we need to re revisit our regulations to make them easier to deal with. No question. Any suggestions anyone has, we'll be open to that when we review them. We're in the process of working through that. You know, we just, the regulations that we will, we will adjust going forward. Um, but the right path right now, I think, is to do the special permit because there's some things that are unaddressed or or is clearly addressed in our regulations to be compliant. Um, I just that's my perspective. I'd like to what does the commission feel? What what I want on, I get concerned about is let's assume as a commission we come to a consensus that this shouldn't even have a special permit. We think it's okay. How defendable is that to somebody who wanted to challenge that? That's not Worse than that, when it, what precedence does it send? The next person that wants to do something is going to send it. I also think if we're going to change our regulations, that does nothing for him to get this in place quick. So, yeah, I wouldn't suggest. I, I think that the question we have to ask ourselves do we feel that this absolutely does not need a special permit? It doesn't need a special permit, regrettably. Uh, regrettably, it does. That's because of the different property owners. Yeah, the different property owners. That unfortunately, I don't want to push my my view. I, I have a perspective. I believe that a commercial business that's in a commercially zoned area shouldn't have to get a special permit to do anything unless they're handling like hazardous materials or you know working around the clock out of that business. I don't understand why we keep putting the clamps on the business in town to just keep making them jump through hoops. I mean, it costs them a fortune to even get where they're at right now. Well, the other, the other issue too is- I mean, they're not gonna go putting a roller coaster up in this place, you know, it's, I, I, it's a simple little thing. You know, I'm sure if he was gonna go and want to put something crazy up, he's gonna to come to the town and ask and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you guys think? Well, the one issue is, going to, if, if it's something that should be, now we're starting to have public hearings, this could go until next year before you get approved. You know, right. I see you know, stuff. Just, and that's, that just hurts business. I think that's unrealistic that it would go until next year. I think the okay. question in front of us, good. yeah, I think the question in front of us, do our regulations as they exist now require a special permit for this? And I, I would say very well, without me having read them, but uh, I, boy, do I trust this guy. <laughs> Um, because I, I, I don't necessarily agree with what John said in the first part about it 
outdoor activities. I think outdoor activities, this is included in, as an outdoor activity. I do agree with John on separate properties. Yes. And that's the problem. That's Portion. understandable. And well, I, that's and something I think I can let's talk with that for now. So, but as that's far as expediency, permit, that's what the special permit's for. He wants it. But as far as expediency and, and basically covering ourselves for any, any kind of right. litigation, I think July 10th is not that far away to get to the public hearing for that. There hasn't been a sluice there in a thousand years. If it doesn't happen this year, it is what it is. Right. So, so I think we just you know we buy so and do so the right kind of believe. Yeah, so we kind of believe. I'm glad we had this discussion. You know, I think most of us are on the same page. We'd like to make it easier to do business. In yeah, time. period. Absolutely. For sure, no question. I, I, and what you said, I let's let's see if the, if the regulations can reflect that sentiment. If if everyone's in agreement or a majority are, when we get to it, get to that point. I suspect it will get to that point. I will say, Rick, a lot of the things that I have tried to do are just because people have asked us about it. You know, hey, can we do this here? Can we do that there? So we throw some spaghetti and see if it sticks. If it doesn't, it's a summertime thing. If I go to Florida. <laughs> if you don't get it in, so be it. Okay. I, I mean, Okay. It's a little entertaining. It's like the car show. Everybody knows a bird when there's a car show. But so if you drive your station wagon to the main moose and eat, you're fine. But if you drive your 32 Ford, you need a permit. I, I don't get it. Right. Oh, I don't think that's accurate. Um, I mean, it is. Yeah, well, it's, it's pretty good. But we have challenges. Yeah, let's not Yeah, we're not going to humor me. Let's not get yeah, there. Is problems like that. Yeah, can we not not get into this? No, exactly. Yeah, I, I think we have a, this sentiment that it's important that we make it easier to do business in town. Um, to, you know, it's just it's very important. So, John, I appreciate your guidance on this. Let's stick with our plan for the, spe the special permit application. Uh, we'll we'll address it then. Okay, and. Make I, I, I get it. I'm not really trying to make anybody change their laws. It is what it is. Uh, we, you know, we're, we are a legislative body, and we are we've got our ear to the ground, wanting to make this an easier place to live and do business. We change stuff all the time. Yeah, we're we're wide open. It's never finished. It's yeah, and I've said this to many other businesses in town. Well, I've been at it for six years, and nothing's been easy over there. So I don't know what we changed, but I haven't seen it. No offense. Well, we're here twice a month. If you want to come over? You guys look like you're no election time is coming up. You want to run? No. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Uh, nothing under regulation or revisions, unless you want to talk about subcommittee uh, interaction. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no, I just a quick update. So we're, we met before this meeting. We're making some progress. Um, I guess that's what I'll say. Uh, John and I have been working on some stuff, verbiage to make things better. So we're making headway. Okay. That's good. We have on. Um, I have a quick communication or report. Sure. When you get there. Um, unless you have anything more under regulation revisions. No. All right. Uh, I have accepted a full-time job in the planning department of South Windsor, Connecticut. Oh, congratulations. Slide. So I will be mostly leaving this job. I am hoping to stay on for a while and help out with minutes uh, in order to ease the transition as a uh, side job. Okay. And I thought you should know. Congratulations. Yeah. You'll do a really good job. You've done a great job. Small times are great. We probably gave you a reference. It doesn't mean we don't let you leave. Um, is it not the wetlands agent? Was my reference? Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is a great, great, great preparation. I think. Okay. Anything anyone wants to talk about in open discussion? We do have an executive session that we're going to go into. I would have some updates for you. Yeah. So I'd like to talk about that WIC thing with. Farmers markets and the website. I believe there's, depending on what association you want to belong to, take on the WIC card or which one. That doesn't mean they all do or the individuals have to take it. Because a lot of them are just very local farmers that, that have very small farms and they may not even have the electronics to take a WIC card, it's like a credit card. So I don't think that automatically comes 
to, to that end, yeah, no. So the the what was discussed um, that I you guys moved ahead and, and approved it before I got a chance to say um, that the 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 farmers markets that are listed on the state website, the Department of Agriculture website, are specifically CT grown authorized CT grown um, sanctioned. But you you know if so if you want to be officially called a CT grown um, sanctioned farmers market and be listed by the Department of Agriculture. Yes, then there needs to be some locally grown element, and and uh, you need to go through some certification. But just to simply have what is you know sort of a cap or a small f farmers market, informal as as Mr. Harrington, you don't have to register with the state. It's a private, it's a private establishment, so he can regulate what he wants and what he does there. Or probably each uh, um, each vendor, right? Vendor has their own way of doing their business, right? Right. So I don't, I don't believe Mr. Harrington is seeking any sort of official sanction from the Department of Agriculture. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, just real quick, basically, I just want to bring this up from last meeting too about oversight for zoning enforcement mm -hmm. and having some process around that. So I think that if we can move towards that, it would, it would help for communication both ways. And understanding what's still going on with zoning enforcement, uh, but also be a good communication back to the to the commission. And if we have an oversight function, which we are not utilizing the best as we could, I think that that would help get some direction. So I would like to move forward to that in some respect. Hey, sometimes years ago, the zoning enforcement officer used to take these names. They should. Um, should. It's, it's very unusual that they don't. And um, anyone, we got a report. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that. Also, it would be good to have discussions outside the meetings, just on process, what's going on, where things stand, both to protect the interests of the town and to protect the industry. You are preaching to the ground. Well, it's it's our responsibility. We need to make decisions. So, uh, we that's got it. John. We haven't gotten anywhere with it. On administration. On this topic, John, I had an extensive discussion with Connie, Connie Kislik on the phone today about zoning enforcement in general um and there's some items that i'm going to bring up in our executive session that i don't want to touch on in in open commit commission discussion but i think part of the open commission discussion i think we would like to um discuss uh whether we're going to take a much more active role in the enforcement aspect of of what's going on in town and to that end uh, but I don't think we're going to make any definitive decision this evening, but where it's likely to go is we would like a report absolutely positively at every meeting of the status of every zoning issue. It's a spreadsheet that's maintained on a regular basis. I'd like to see it. I did get a, a spreadsheet emailed to me at 615 this evening, and I'll send it out to every commission member. But the spreadsheet that I've received in the past has been very hard to decipher what the real status of that action is. Um, Connie feels absolutely overwhelmed uh, with her, her review, review responsibilities on applications combined with doing enforcement action. Uh, and that's a discussion for another time, I would think. But I think us having more interaction with her, um, maybe even trying to schedule her being a, a, Zoom, a Zoom member of of our meetings at least once a month, if not every every meeting, would be something that we would like to pursue. And whether I channel that conversation through you or directly with Connie, um, I'll, I'll talk with you about that offline. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I, I mean, I'm 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 I, I'm happy to have the discussion. I'm not Connie's supervisor, nor do does the, the payment of her hours come out of my budget. Um, that may maybe something. You want to talk to Mark Walter about as as he both has some supervisory and and financial oversight. Glad you're clarifying that because there was an impression that that maybe you did have some supervisory role because it's you, your license that we're using as the zoning enforcement uh, license because Connie isn't currently a registered zoning enforcement officer. I, I haven't I have not to this point signed any any enforcement orders nor uh, you know notices of violation that are on the legal record so. Uh, in that sense, I have not I have not put anything in writing along those lines. So we're going to talk in more depth 
when we get into executive session about uh, pending action. And so we can talk in more depth at that time. Uh, John, if, if the town is using your zoning license, you should be directly supervising Connie. I, I disagree, but, um, and, and it's to be clear, um, the, the, my participation as, a, as sort of a backstop zoning enforcement officer is merely a precaution because there has been no case law testing the, the validity of uh, non-currently CZEO licensed zoning enforcement officers to interpret and enforce the regulations. As far as we know, Connie's um, authority as the zoning enforcement officer is 100% you know, unquestioned and 100% authoritative. Um, but again, the, the, the statutes change slightly in this, in this realm. Um, so I offer, you know, my participation as a, as a backstop in case we get into murky legal waters where we wanna make sure no one can question um, the, the certification of the, of the zoning enforcement officer. But, but again, no case law has given us any reason to think that, that um, Connie's current lack of, of zoning certification is significant. Again, it, it, this is on an abundance of precaution. So I would, I would, I would respectfully disagree. Are you, are you expected to sign anything? Any I, I think if we, if we, if we, I have offered that if it comes to it, if, you know, if, if in consultation with the town's attorney, um, on a, on a particularly, you know, high, uh, profile or, or high stakes zoning enforcement matter um, if the town attorney believes that it would be more uh, appropriate to have a, a certified zoning enforcement officer sign an order i would do so but i i you know that has not been our practice as of yet and and well, again how, how could you sign something if you're not the supervisor of the person doing the work again i haven't signed anything well no, but you said it's still good in the future you could but you, so it's, it's, um, it's sort of like um, hiring two cops. You know, the, the supervisor cop doesn't need to supervise every arrest. Well, or both, the, she's not police, both policemen have licenses. Connie does not have a license, right. But, but it's also, the, the statute isn't 100% clear that, that the, her, her experience and, and appointment schedule make it absolutely necessary for her to do it. Again, this is an area of uncertain case law. And so out of an abundance of caution, we, I, I offered that, but you are, if you would like, you can deputize three dozen zoning enforcement officers, if you would like, that is your authority. Um, and, and so both Connie and I have been so appointed um, and she continues to function as the primary zoning enforcement officer. And, and there's no reason to think she, she oughtn't um, continue to do so. Um, but again, there is, some potential statutory uncertainty is all. Just <clears throat> let me ask a rhetorical question, John. Does it, so the state of Connecticut is requiring zoning enforcement officers to have a certification, correct or incorrect? I, I'm sorry, Justin, could you restate the question? The state of Connecticut is requiring a zoning enforcement officer to have a certain certification, that's correct? I would have to pull up this. I would have to pull up the public act, but I believe it said any um, any zoning enforcement officer appointed after January first of this year, twenty twenty three, shall obtain and maintain certification. So there is a an interpretation that I have heard, I um, that because Connie's appointment occurred before January first, twenty twenty three, meaning she's been a zoning enforcement officer for years. Um, that 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 certification is not necessary. I've also heard interpretations that that anyone who is a zoning enforcement officer from that point going forward needs to obtain that certification. Um, and and again, it hasn't gone to court yet. And and the and the and the legislature, in their wisdom, has not provided clarification for what they meant. So until such time as it goes to court and some zoning officers' credentials are challenged we won't know the answer um and so again to make sure and, and because i was here helping the town anyway as a consulting planner i offered to to you know use my use my my certification if we need it and and to this point i have seen no reason that we need it but again 
if we run into a, a higher profile, higher stakes zoning enforcement matter, wherein our town council says, John, you, you better be on the record for this one, then fine, then fine. But, but um, again, this is, a, this is a better better safe than sorry thing, but I don't believe there's any reason to think that Connie either, either experientially or statutorily lacks any, lacks any ability or, or authority to enforce. Okay, let me go with this issue for now. I appreciate yeah. everything you've said, John. Uh, okay, anything else on your audience of citizens? Um, uh, did you ask something? Oh, I just wanted to say something. Your name is sir? I, uh, Michael Altieri, I live at One Plankers Road in Columbia, next Hi. to Steve's properties. Um, about the streamlining, the about getting a business or something and you have special permits and plot like you already have them and then you buy another piece of property. The reason why you don't have um, it just magically, you know, we buy a new property and then you have the same permits across. You have to at least have some kind of talking to or something because like if you have like a junkyard, you can't just keep buying properties and magically having a giant junkyard. You still have to keep getting new permits for that property. And I use oh, I just, just saying that if you do streamlining, you got to have some kind of check or quest talking, not just letting it steamroll into the next property. Or the next okay. property. That's all. You know, I appreciate what you're saying. And, Thank you. And may I add to what Mike yes, said? Just say your name again for the record. Yes, Carol Ann McLean. Um, because when, when they purchase properties that are further and further out, you're now going into residential areas where three houses are. And Steve having a lovely business, they do beautiful construction and all of that, their food's fabulous. But you know, if the activities are going to be right next to our doorstep when we're trying to sleep, you know, and there's a band going on and everybody's having fun and you know the noise or or whatever is going on, parking or you know, we should at least have some say um at a public hearing as to you know that that would be a disturbance to just, us. Just for reference, so and I maybe it's not even necessary to bring up, mm -hmm. but I believe the properties in the area you're describing are in a commercial district and they're uh, grandfathered non-conforming residential uses in a commercial district. Right, right. but the three current houses are residential, you know, families live in each house. So they're commercially zoned, but non-conforming residential use. Correct. No, I'm not talking about one plane or drug. I'm oh. talking about the one on yeah. 166. Yeah, yes, correct. Um, so, you know, that's where the consideration of the zoning commission would be appreciated and not just, you know, approve all of this because you have to consider who's living next door or what business is next door. I mean, wouldn't they have a right to say something? Absolutely. That's kind of the purpose of a public hearing. Yep. That's yeah, the purpose. that's the reason for the public hearing. Well, it's the three properties. So, um, you know, if it was if they got their papers together and made it one property, I don't even think we'd be having this discussion, but uh, because it is three separate properties, right, Steve? John. Um, it is John, three, I'm sorry. It is three separate properties. <laughs> right. It is three separate properties. Okay, let's not talk about this specific application in, in any way whatsoever. Let's just talk in general. Oh, okay. But that's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have an executive session and then we're going to adjourn. John, I would ask you to stay on for our executive session. Josh, I don't think we're going to the office. Yeah. And uh, then then I'll come down and let you know when we've adjourned okay. the meeting so you can clear things out. But if you could stop recording. So this part is not over.